Brought to you by... For many years, the night before Halloween has become the home for acts of juvenile misconduct. Often young people will venture out into the night, causing mayhem on a small scale, and playing pranks on unsuspecting bystanders, giving the date of October 30th a more mischievous name. <laughs> my mischievous little friends and welcome back to embrace the film today i want to break away from the confines of this room let the monster out of the cage toilet paper some houses burn some bags of dog shit on the front porches of our enemies and for the first time celebrate mischief night i need help fuck me running this one kicks off into some abysmally bad performances over rose petals and cheap wine. Thankfully, it doesn't linger here too long before we are thrust into the story of young Emily Walton, who has suffered from psychosomatic blindness ever since the accident that took her mother's life. On this night, she must summon every instinct at her disposal to protect herself and her loved ones from a mysterious intruder. The opening moments of this film are a classic cheap slasher flick, dispatching a couple of worthless characters at the hands of a costume creeper. Following this is a more modern home invasion style thriller, with another simply designed killer which stood out to me. We have brought this axe wheeling maniac in a griming porcelain mask and bright yellow raincoat. Not your run of the mill visual choice, but striking and unique. The performances throughout the film are solid and strong to some degree. Our lead actress, Noelle Cote, does an incredible job with creating a believable performance of this young blind girl, even going so far as to maintain minimal eye movement during sequences of intense physical and emotional strain. Her physical actions perfectly reflect someone who cannot see and is not all that comfortable or familiar with their surroundings. While her boyfriend, on the other hand, plays his naive adolescence very well, and the actor who played her father looked a lot like Bill Nye the Science Guy, which threw me off a little at first. I was also thrown off by the setting of the narrative. I'm not sure if it was always planned this way, or if things were tied up due to budget restrictions, but the opening moments of the film take place in the same house as the rest of it. This choice makes it seem like the killers only target those living in this house. They did make a conscious effort to have it make sense by explaining briefly that our characters have only lived there for a few months, but it still felt a bit strange. The film itself plays along almost the exact same strings as Mike Flanagan's Hush, pitting a young physically afflicted protagonist against a murderous madman. The choice to have a protagonist who cannot see what is happening around her makes for some fun intense moments throughout the narrative, where the intruders are stalking in the room with her, invading her space on a deeply uncomfortable level without her ever knowing. They do a great job with establishing our protagonist, her f familiarity with her surroundings, and her relationships with others around her, as well as her mental state regarding her affliction. The filmmakers paid incredible attention to details in regards to Emily's blindness, building tense moments throughout the story. For example, she breaks a bowl when she's trying to turn off a smoke alarm, and we are hung in the tension of the moment as she dangles over the shattered pieces, unaware of where they are. Though the majority of the plot plays out in a predictably standard fashion to what you might expect if you've seen home invasion flicks, the narrative is well structured in that it sets up information and pays it off pretty well. When the father is leaving for his date, he makes quick mention of a spare key under the mat, just in case. While he says this, Emily's bedroom window is wide open, leaving room for our intruders to have overheard this information, which explains how they were able to get into the house later on. The film features some brutal moments of gore and a fair amount of bloodshed at the hands of the killers with a sadistic nature, which makes them very unsettling throughout. We watch them stand by methodically watching Emily as she moves around the house in terror, not knowing that they are looming only feet away. I always love watching the hopeless infatuation that the killers have with the thrill of the hunt, 
They use characters' flaws against them and relish in toying with their victims. It makes for a more chilling experience by elevating the stakes for the audience. There is no focus on the identity of the killers in this film. They are never revealed to be anyone we know because it's not important to the narrative, which for me elevated the experience, making the events of the film just a random and unwarranted act of violence. I love the way that the camera lingers through various sequences in this film, like you are witnessing the events through the watchful eyes of the intruders first hand, or at any moment the camera will pan to reveal one of the masked intruders standing in the room with Emily. I'm giving Mischief Knight a B plus. Overall I feel that this was a fun and enjoyable experience, however its similarities to other films like Hush is hard to ignore. I think the filmmakers did a great job with creating a tense atmosphere that keeps you at the edge of your seat, and pays off its tension with some strong kill scenes, but the film as a whole does technically fall into a scene one scene them all category. If you enjoy home invasion thrillers, or maybe you haven't seen that many of them, then I would definitely give this a watch. If you enjoyed today's video, feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. If you'd like to show your support for the channel, please consider checking us out on Patreon, where every pledge, no matter how small, goes right back into the channel to help keep fresh content coming your way. As always, don't forget to subscribe, stay spooky, and I will catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.